Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. <clears throat> this morning, talking about, uh, you might say, under <laughs> uh, overestimating the amount of forage that was here. Uh, and this is one that I did. Uh, you know, I still make mistakes too, but we were, we were trying to buy a little time. And I've got a silver pasture area back over the hill here that I cut out two years ago. And we wanted to put a little pressure on that with the cattle. And boy, we certainly did. Uh, they went in there and stripped it pretty well, uh, beat it down pretty well. But they also came out here and really hammered this paddock. Now, it, it's fine. I mean, it's going to recover really good. Um, I've got tremendous manure. I mean, just everywhere you look, there's manure. Um, but the forage is all trampled on the ground. Okay? All of it. Okay? In my earlier years, I would say, oh, that's, that's good. But, you know, now that we're looking at more animal performance, we want our animals to gain. And we also want our animals to breed back. If you did this practice, what I did right here, all summer long where all your pastures look like this folks you're going to end up with maybe 25 30 percent of your cows not breeding back and that is one of the biggest costs of being a cow calf man is not getting your cows bred back because you pushed them too hard in other words you, you got so focused on building soil trampling litter you know this mob grazing to the extreme that you weren't watching your cows and I watched them when they came out of here, and they were sunken in a little bit. Not excessively, but a little. So, and it only happened, we put them in at, let's see, 4, no, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We moved them out at 7.30 the next morning. So it wasn't like they were in here for days and days. They are only in here for not even quite half a day. Okay? I guess it would have been half a day. But at night, you know, they don't graze that much. But this, look what they did. I mean, they flat put the hammer on this pad. Okay, it's all laid on the ground. We're not going to be back here probably for around 60 days. So it's going to have plenty of time to recover. But here's a really good example. Let's look, let's look across the fence. Aha! So from that corner post all the way up to here, this corner post, this is their next move. And so when we moved them into here, we gave them a bigger area. And we moved them about the same time. But my God, look at this. See the, see the difference? I mean, there's enough grass in here for probably another two or three hours. We had 350 head in here, but look at that. Can you see a stark difference? Overgrazed? Perfect. And there's even some grass here. Here's a grass clump that they didn't eat. It, something probably peed on that, okay? That's why that didn't get eaten. Didn't get trampled too bad. So I've got some standing. I've got some laying on the ground, got quite a bit of it eaten off just perfectly. Look at that. Just perfect, okay? They put pressure on it, but they didn't get limited. And we moved the cows out of here. I looked at the sides, and I should have had a video. I have to apologize. Um, every single animal, their side was absolutely filled out. There wasn't any death triangle in any of these cattle. And so we're back going. So I guess the, the moral of the story is you can overgraze like that for a short period, but wisen up, realize what you did, and get them moving. Give them a bigger area. Don't do this right here all summer long. You end up with some cows that are going to get thin on you. And folks, <clears throat> when you get the pH on a cow up to 9, and that's what would happen right here. The pH on a cow should be at 7. You go to 9 on your pH level on the inside of the gut of the cow, or the, the urine, those cows won't even cycle. In other words, they're not even going to breed. You don't have a chance to get them bred. Okay, plenty of intake. Give them all they want to eat every single day. And you can still get some trampling over here. You don't have to nuke your property like that. Th that puts a lot of pressure on your animal's health. You don't want to do that. And we're trying to finish grass-fed steers. You're not going to finish steers if your pasture's looking like that, folks. Just not going to happen. you got to go over here like this. Look at this. Heck, they even left a clump of clover there. Again, something may have stepped on or peed on it. But tremendous, tremendous sward left here. So this is going to come back a lot better. Okay? There's a lot bigger solar collector left here. We didn't nuke it. And we got a lot of soil cover. We're going to catch a lot of rainfall. 
and a tremendous animal performance. Folks, this is Greg Judy signing off, and be careful, guys, out there and ladies. Don't nuke your pastures every day like that. Focus on this. This is going to give you good animal performance and quick recovery periods. Everyone have a great one.